Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Talking Bullion. Well, I'm excited to announce that this is the beginning of a new series that I'm doing on junk silver, or constitutional silver, or 90% silver. Now, I know a lot of people don't like the term junk silver, and frankly, I really don't either, but uh, it is so recognized in the community and outside of the community as junk silver, and probably secondly is 90% and then thirdly is constitutional silver. And if I have my choice, I'll call it constitutional silver because that's really what I think it is. But for this series, I think I'm going to title it junk silver because I just think that that's what it's most commonly recognized as. So no offense, love the stuff, and it certainly is not junk. These beautiful U.S. coins are not only incredible, they also can be a very collectible asset. Not numismatically collectible, but more in the sense of silver stacking and having some great silver to collect. And another good thing about it is you can usually get it for a really good price. Now a couple of things about junk silver. It's usually a circulated coin that has no value above the silver melt value. So we're going to take a look at these here in a little bit. But uh, I've got some halves, some quarters, some dimes. And they don't really have any value above their silver melt value. And as you know, silver's been going up quite a bit lately, so the value keeps increasing on these things. But overall, I don't buy them to have a rare dated coin or to come across something that's worth tens of thousands of dollars. There are a few key dates out there, and we'll talk about that in another video. But overall, you go out and you buy this stuff, you're just buying it for the silver melt value. In a junk silver coin, or constitutional silver, or a 90% coin, is anything made before 1965. There are half dollars, John F. Kennedy's, that were made from 65 to 70 that have 40% silver in them, and a lot of people collect those as well. But mostly if you hear somebody referring to junk silver, they're referring to anything 1964 and earlier. And they're made out of 90% silver and 10% copper. And as I said earlier, we have dimes, quarters, and halves. Now it's important to note that Morgan silver dollars and peace dollars are not usually considered junk silver. It's because they have more silver in them. Let's take a quick look at a Morgan silver dollar, a couple of them. Here's an 1896 and an 1879. Beautiful pieces of US coinage for sure. And these are pretty popular usually don't consider them junk silver. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute. So here's some peace dollars. 1922, 22, and a 22. These are beautiful as well. And they're very nice to collect as part of your silver stacking. But yeah, I'm going to leave these down here like this. Yeah, there we go. So as I mentioned, these have more silver in them. When they're in circulated condition, they have 0.76420 of silver in them. Both of them are the same. Now when they're in uncirculated condition, they have 0.77345 ounces of silver in them. So you'll see the 0.77 reference a lot when, when it comes to the Morgan and the Peace Dollars. But that's a BU coin and not a circulated coin like these are. So that's important for me as a stacker to understand because if you're getting a whole roll of them, there'll be a, a different amount of silver in there if you use the uh, 0.77345 calculation instead of the calculation for circulated coins. So how much silver is in these? Well, anybody that watches my video knows that the calculation for these is 0.715 for circulated coins. So again, this was point. 7642 and this is 0.715. That's almost a 7% difference. So circulated halves, quarters, and dimes, a dollar face value has 0.715 ounces of silver in it, and an uncirculated dollar value is 0.7234. Okay, so 0.715 if it's circulated, and 0.7234 if it's BU or uncirculated. 
So let's take a look at a few of these uncirculated. I'm sorry, a few of these circulated. We'll do the uncirculated here in a moment. You can see here those beautiful edges. You can always tell by the edges right away. So you can see here, let's put them in my hand. These have been spent. They've been in somebody's packet. You see there's somewhere on them. But they're still in pretty good shape. Still have lots of silver in there. So this would be a 0.715 measurement when you are purchasing it from somebody you would use that number. We'll go through those numbers. I'll get them documented on the screen here for you so it's very easy to understand because I know some people get confused about the numbers and how you use them. But I'll see if I can simplify it for you. And then these here, these are uncirculated. And you can immediately tell. Look at the condition. A lot of it's, uh, look at Washington's hair, but look how shiny they are. Now uncirculated can still be toned. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. Don't let toning fool you. They can still be uncirculated and be toned. So these you would pay more for. These would be 0.7234 in your calculation. Now, all mine I received for the 0.715 because the guy I was buying it from gave me some very nice looking coins uh, for the same price as circulated coins. So another thing that's important to understand is how much face value is equal to an ounce of silver. It's not a dollar. A dollar worth of half dollars or quarters or dimes is not an ounce of silver. We, we just talked about it being 0.715. So if you had $10 face, 10 times 0.715 would be 7.15 ounces. So for every $10 you have, there's 7.15 ounces of silver in there. So for, so to get an ounce of silver, you need a dollar forty face value. So dollar forty in any way you want to do it. So here's four quarters. All right, and then. Here is four dimes. Got some rosies here. So if somebody handed you a dollar forty face value like this, all right, four dimes, four quarters, you would have an ounce of silver. Now it's not perfect. It's one point three nine something, but when you go out to purchase the stuff, that's what people will use as a dollar forty face value. Now what you could do is you could take away the four quarters. Okay, we can set these aside. And we can get two half dollars, two JFKs here, and you still have a dollar forty, right? So this is still one ounce of silver. Alright? So that's pretty cool. So you know for every dollar forty you have, you've got an ounce of silver. Alright? So why don't we go through, and just out of curiosity, let's see how much how much silver I have in these tubes. And I am going to open these tubes up and show some of this beautiful coinage. But let me uh, put it back for a moment, and we'll count it up. See what we have here. All right, and my uh, peace dollars. Push away my dimes. So let me go ahead and set these uh, dollars off to the side right now because, as we mentioned earlier, these are a different calculation. Where junk silver is almost primarily halves, quarters, and dimes. All right. So let me put these back in here. So let's total up how much face we have. All right. So we have $10, $20, $30, $40, $50, $60, $70. Alright, roll of quarters is worth ten dollars, a roll of halves is ten dollars. So ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty. Now a roll of dimes, there's fifty of them in there, is worth five dollars face. So we have eighty, two of these are ninety, and two more are a hundred. So we have a hundred dollars face. Now I gave you two numbers earlier, and I think these numbers are really, really important to remember, okay? The first number was 0.715, and again, that's for circulated junk silver, which is almost always how you're going to purchase it. That's how I purchase it. I'm not willing to pay the extra amount for the uncirculated 
junk silver. I just think that circulated is fine. That's what that's how it's usually sold, and that's how most people expect to receive it. So I gave you 0 0.715, and I gave you one dollar and forty cents, the face value for an ounce of silver. So let's go through the math here. So if you had a hundred dollars in face value, there's a couple different ways you can figure out how much it's worth. You can take a hundred, which is the face value, and you can multiply it by 0.715, and that'll give you 71.50. So there is 71 and a half ounces of pure silver in this junk silver. Pretty amazing, huh? Over 70 ounces of silver in here. All right. Now the second thing you can do is you can take $100, $100 face value, so 100, and you can divide by 1.4 or $1.40. And if you do that, you get 71.43. So basically 71.5, close enough, right? So either way, you will arrive at the same amount, the same answer. So that's how you calculate, and that's why those numbers are just so important to know, 0.715, and 1.40. I usually use the 0.715. I keep it simple. It's it's a very easy number to remember and I use it for my calculations all the time. Now, let me warn you, if you go out to a site like CoinApps, okay, great reference site for putting in your, your amount of uh, coins that you have and determining the value because let's say somebody says they have, you know, 16 dimes and 34 quarters Sometimes it's easier to just use an application or some way to do it, but just be aware that CoinApps uses the BU amount, 0.7234 for their calculation. They do not use 0.715. And let me show you that here for a minute. Okay, so here we are in CoinApps.com. If you come over here to the U.S. Silver Coin Mount Value Calculator and click that, you can come down here and you can put in how many dimes, how many quarters, how many halves, it doesn't matter. And it really doesn't matter if you put in a Mercury dime or a Roosevelt dime, they'll come back the same. So if you type in a 1, it's 1.934. If you get rid of that and put it down here, it's 1.934. So it really doesn't matter where you put it for the dimes and the quarters, it all come back the same. So what it does is it reads the current price per troy ounce, and you can change it if you want to. But it's nice to just pull what's current. And again, let's say we had 16 dimes and 34 quarters. So automatically, you don't have to hit enter or anything. It's real time. As soon as you type it in, it says 195.88. So the melt value of this quantity is 195.88. But again, that is the BU number. And if you're going to buy with the BU number, you're probably going to miss out on a little bit of a cost for the real price of the silver. So let me show you what I mean. The difference between 0.7234 and 0.715 is about 0 0.012. So over here, they do have a spot where you can put in amount of wear. So I put that in there. So if you go in there and you put in 1.2, which will account for that wear. Now no, watch the number down here, 195.88. So 193.53, so there is a difference. There is definitely a difference. A little over $2, right? So if you do that over the many times that you're gonna buy this stuff, that makes, that makes a big difference. And for me, it's important because almost all the stuff you're gonna buy, unless they tell you it's AU or BU, is gonna have wear in it. So let's go back to, let's take this out. Take this out. Start over and let's just put in one dime. Okay. One dime, 1.9394. Let's call it 1.94. We put in the 1.2. 1.92. So that's two cents for every dime. So for your dollar cost averaging, I just want you to know that this makes a difference. And so just be aware that this site puts in the full amount, like there's no wear in the coin. And in fact, if you look down here, see how it says 0 0.07234, basically, 2339, round it up. 
that is showing you that it's the BU number, like we talked about before. All right. If we put in the 1.2, you see it brings it down to the 715 that we were talking about. All right. So just be aware. So if we were to put in 10, this is when you can see the actual numbers that I was talking about. So, so for a dollar, 10 times would equal a dollar, 0.7234. And we put in this, 0.715. All right. So it's really important that when you're looking this stuff up, you use those numbers. And again, I know there's a lot of talking and explaining here, but really the bottom line is just know 0.715. I think if you know that, you'll be in great shape. All right. So what's the difference between AU and BU? You, you'll see that a lot. Well, AU means almost uncirculated, and BU means brilliant uncirculated. So for the most part, when it comes to junk silver, you will you will pay a higher amount for an AU or BU. They almost use them interchangeably, even though they're not. Almost uncirculated means it was in circulation, but barely got anywhere on it. Uh, brilliant uncirculated means it never was in anybody's pocket. So you have to understand that you're going to pay more for the BU and the AU, and it's going to affect your dollar cost averaging. And I really don't believe if I ever need to sell this or need it for some, you know, radical situation that happens, I really don't think people care about the BU. And so I'm not willing to pay the premium, but I know there's a few fellow YouTube stackers out there that only buy the BU. They love it and they don't want any wear on it. And cool, good for them. But if you were to stack junk silver for a couple of years and paid BU prices the whole time, after you got done stacking for your two years and I got done stacking for my two years, we would see that my dollar cost averaging was quite a bit less. All right, so why don't we go ahead and look at some of this stuff, all right? Yeah, I've been looking at these cases long enough. So why don't we go ahead and look at these. These are some walkers. We'll talk in a little bit about the difference between you know, that the current, more current uh, chunk silver and some of the older stuff like the walkers and barbers and things like that there. So there's a roll, just 20 of them, of walkers. Here's some Franklins. Oh yeah, look at those. And then we have some John F. Kennedy's. So these are the three John F. Kennedy coins. These are the three that are most common when you buy today. So the Walkers, the Franklins, and the Kennedys. And I'll have their pros and cons. Some will go for more, some will go for less. A lot of people like the Walkers. They're, they're older and they're pretty cool. But the thing about the Walkers is they usually have the most wear on them. So you definitely want to use the .715 when you're buying these. And But people love them. So you'll pay more, really, because they're more collectible in people's minds. The Franklins kind of sit right in between. Uh, they're usually not quite as wore down as the Walking Liberties. Um, but, um, you know, people don't seem to... You know, a lot of people like them, for sure. But I don't get a whole lot of requests for them. But they are great junk silver to stack. Definitely uh, Franklins are a good thing. And then we have the John F. Kennedys. And they're only the 1964 or the only 90% JFKs. The other ones from 65 to 70 are 40%. And if they're beyond 70, they're clad, meaning they're just worth 50 cents, copper, nickel, just like any of today's coins. JFKs can tend to pull a premium as well. People love the JFKs, especially if you have them in BU or AU condition. Look at that thing. And they, you can find them in that condition because a lot of people hoarded these coins. And, I mean, I didn't buy when I marked my tubes as BU. I didn't buy them as BU. I just looked at them and thought they looked BU. So, just nicer condition ones. But like I said, I've never paid for a roll of BU Kennedys because I don't want to pay the price for them. All right, so there we go. There's $30 worth of... Three different types of half dollars. Pretty cool, huh? 
All right, so why don't we uh, let me put some quarters on here. These are going to be all Washingtons. You can see silver, some cleaner than the others, but all just beautiful half dollars. There's a four, or, sorry, beautiful quarters. 1946, 57, various years. You know, let's not be skimpy. Let's put another ten dollars worth of quarters on there. Oh, look at that. That was nice or what? Push them up here a little higher. We'll get this out of the way. Getting a lot of empty tubes laying around. Look at that, huh? Ooh. So let's put our quarters over here and let's do some dimes. Let's do a roll of Mercury's and a roll of Roosevelt's. So Roosevelt started in 1946 through 1964. They're usually in better condition because they're not quite as old, won't circulate it as much in theory. And there we have some nice Roosevelt dimes, huh? Oh, those are beautiful. Oops, one escaped from me. And then the Mercury's started in 1916 through 1945. And they're just beautiful coins. Let's lay these down. And let's look at a Mercury. Sure, everybody's familiar with what a Mercury looks like, but they're still awesome to look at. Camera thinks it wants to know better than me and what the light should be. So yeah, these are just beautiful coins. You see the mint marks down there, on the left side and bottom of the torch, and yeah, very nice coins, huh? So this is a nice pile of junk silver. How much did we put down there? We know that we put down $30 worth of halves, another $20 worth of uh, quarters, and $10 worth of dimes. So $30, $40, $50, $60 dollars of junk silver laying in this pile, huh? They're pretty nice or what? Let's zoom in on it. All right. Love it. This Mercury Dime. Yeah, a fight with a can of paint, it looks like. Still, I never clean my junk silver. I don't suggest that you do either. A lot of people will disagree with me on that, but there's nothing wrong with this stuff being old, dirty, and beautiful. Very nice stuff. Now, another important point of dealing with silver is that knowing that it comes in troy ounces and not ounces. So you should know is a troy ounce is 31.1 grams and a standard ounce is 28.4. So if somebody tries to sell you silver as a standard ounce, they're not giving you the amount of silver that you should be receiving. Now, eBay is absolutely terrible at this. There are so many ads on eBay about standard ounces and buy this ounce, this, this ounce of, you know, junk silver and it's in standard ounces. And they try to trick you on that. And they actually list it in a lot of different ways on eBay. And I will probably do a separate video on that because we could talk about that for quite a while. But just be aware that you always want to make sure you're using 31.1 as your ounce in grams and not 28.4. And you want to make sure that the person selling it to you is using the same calculation as well. Because they will try to trick and fool you on that. And there's conversions. You can go out to the internet and type in convert, you know, standard ounce to troy ounce or troy ounce to standard ounce. So if you do come across an ad that has it in ounces, standard ounces, you can do the conversion and figure it out pretty quick. Like I said, I'll do another video on that later to, to help with understanding all that. Because eBay is a good resource, but you got to be very careful on what you buy out there. So let's talk about the calculations one more time because one of the things I want to really, really stress is the face value and the times value that you will see when you go out to buy it. And what I mean is somebody says you can buy a dollar's worth of junk silver for 18 times face. So you'll see that all the time, 19 times face, 15 times face, 15.5 times face. What does that mean? How do you calculate that into today's spot price and know whether or not you're getting a good deal? Because if you go to a local coin store or a coin show, you're going to need to know because they're probably going to have 18x, 19x written on top of their bags of junk silver. 
And before you leave for the coin shop or the coin show, you need to know what these numbers are to know if you're getting a good deal or not. So let's see how we do that. And really, it's, it's not that bad. Again, you just have to remember these important numbers, right? The way to determine what the current times value on junk silver should be would be based on spot price, right? So you take spot and you multiply it by 0.715 and that will determine the times value. So for example, if spot is currently $26.91, we would multiply that by 0.715 and you would get 19.24. So if you went to a coin show today and they had their junk silver labeled at 19.24x, you would know that you were getting it for spot. All right. Anything above that, you're paying more than spot. Anything below that, you're getting it for less than spot. All right. But let's say you had it out, you forgot to look on what, what the X value should be. So you get to a, a coin show and you see the X value on a bag of mercury dimes. How do you calculate that as in relationship to spot? You would take that X value and divide by 0.715. The last calculation we multiplied, this is the X value you divide by 0.715. And that determines how much you're paying for it per ounce, right? So let's say you walked into the coin store and you saw 19 times written on the bag. You would divide that by 0.715. You would find out that it was $26.57 per ounce that you're paying for it. And then you realize that spot today is $26.91. So you're actually getting a pretty good deal. You're getting a 30, 40 cents below spot. See how that 0.715 comes into play on almost anything you do? So if you remember that number, you can really determine almost anything you need to on the spot. No pun intended, right? So you're at a coin show. You're at a coin store or maybe a friend calls you says hey i got a guy i know that's you know selling some silver you know right away how much it's worth by doing these calculations all right so i hope that helps out a lot because i use that all the time when i look at ads on craigslist or let go or offer up they say they want you know 450 bucks for you know 220 dimes whatever it might be uh you can use these numbers, these calculations I showed you earlier, and then these numbers too, to determine how much that is compared to spot. So let's talk about some older junk silver. We're talking about, you know, some barber coins. We have some barber halves in here. We're talking about maybe some standing Liberty quarters. Got a few of those here, right? So these are definitely junk silver. They're just older than these, right? And look at the wear on them. Let me take them easier to see if I take them out of here, right? Look at the back of this. Look at the wear on them. Front. I mean, this coin has been in some pockets, right? This is uh, this is nice. And look at the SLQs. A lot of the SLQs, uh, the earlier ones, don't even have the dates on them because uh, they wore off on the dates as well. 27. Looks like a 27 as well. So what about these? So what if they try to sell you these? Now here's the deal with these. These will almost always have a higher premium because they're older and they'll almost always have less silver in them as well. So let me take a look at uh, these three. So there was a period of time when there was a barber half. Let me push this up a little bit so I can get these on the screen. The barber half. A barber quarter and that out of there. The barber dime. All right. But look at the wear on this thing, huh? All right. So there's all three halves, dimes, quarters. Just trying to find one that wasn't quite so wore. There we go. That's a little bit better looking one. So what's the deal with these? Well, the deal with these is that they will cost you more and you will get less silver. So here's what you have to decide. Are you a stacker? 
or a collector or somewhere in between. So if you're a collector, you might want to collect these, right? Because they they are old and people love them, right? Just gonna see if I could zoom in on these, get a better look at them. Let me see if I can just pull my phone down, bring it over, zoom it in. There we go. It's a little better, right? So 1901, 1895, 1902. So see the wear on these now. I don't buy these myself. I do not go out to buy these. I don't want to pay the premiums because I'm a stacker. These have been included when I just bought a bag full of junk silver. These were these were in there. So that's how I got them. But you're going to pay a high premium for these. If you want these, you're going to pay a higher premium. And if you want these in AU or BU condition, you're going to pay a lot of money for these. These are going to cost you some cash. So if you want to collect them, you can but you're gonna pay big bucks for them. So generally speaking, when you're out to buy junk silver, you're not gonna get these barbers, these SLQs. Let me throw one of those on the screen here. You're, not, you're just not gonna get them because uh, they, they usually go for a premium and if you wanna get them, you're gonna pay a lot more for them. So they're cool coins, I love them. But they're just, uh, they just cost a lot more and the wear on them is, is bad. So probably less than the 0.715 that we use. Let me zoom back out on this. All right, get back on my screen. Bring it up. So be aware that these coins are out there and they may come in your pile of junk silver that you buy. But if you're a stacker, I would not, I would not pay, uh, the premium is for them because I just, you might get it back out actually, you know, uh, you know, somebody might pay a premium for these things, but I'm stacking for weight and the, the weight just really isn't there with these guys. So just be aware of that and it's up to you, you know, it's your, your stack, get what you want. But uh, I think that uh, I'd rather have these great stuff that has a lot of silver in it and just adds to my weight by a lot. Now you can usually pick these up from online bullion dealers. Uh, they were sold out for quite a while there during the initial phases of the pandemic. Uh, they tend to have them back in stock now most of the time, but they're very expensive at the online bullion dealers. And one of the things I've always wondered about the online bullion dealers is do they go through and search all their junk silver and pull out any potential key dates like the 1916 D for the Mercury and the 21 is considered a semi-key date. There's not a whole lot of key dates and stuff. Like I said, I'll do a, a video on it later. But I've often wondered if these uh, these online bullion dealers go through the stuff before they sell it. And I'd have to say probably no. Unless they've got some fancy automated systems that they run it through. It is, would be just too much work to go through every single one of these coins to try to find something that, you know, may be a key date. And so, like them, I don't go through them either. I have not searched through my junk silver at all for anything. So I may have something that's worth a few more bucks in here. And if you're not familiar with the Red Book, the Red Book is a great resource to look all these up to see the mintages and find any that might be worth a little bit more money. But overall, you don't really buy the junk silver for key dates or, you know, finding a coin that's worth, you know, a ton of money. What do you buy junk silver for? Because it has great potential. It's an easy way to stack a lot of weight. It's usually cheaper compared to the other silver bullion. You can get it usually on spot or a few cents above spot. And it uh, it's just it's it's great to have U.S. coinage, this old history of the U.S. in part of your stack. And if you look at what happened recently when the pandemic first started, junk silver was completely sold out. This is stuff that makes people feel good to have. It can be used as bartering. Dimes are really awesome to have because they're great fractional silver. If you go out and you buy fractional silver, you pay a lot, way above spot for it. Dimes are a great way to get fractional silver. If you remember, we said $1.40 is an ounce of 14 dimes, whether it's Roosevelt's or Mercury's. 14 dimes will equal an ounce of silver, so it's great fractional silver. And Another great reason to, to buy junk silver is it's highly recognizable worldwide, not just in the U.S., but around the world. 
People know about the dimes, the quarters, the halves. They know about U.S. coinage. And so it would be easily recognized no matter where you try to sell it or use it if you ever wanted to use it for a barter system, like maybe to barter for some gold. You know, people would easily trade junk silver because there really isn't any junk silver that is fake either. Nobody takes the time to make a fake mercury dime unless it's a 1916D. Somebody may mess with a mint mark or something to try to do that. But there's no, you know, fake quarters and halves out there. It's just not value added to do it. You'd pay a high penalty if you got caught. And it's just not, it's just not worth it. So you can be rest assured that the stuff you're buying is not fake where you can't do that with a lot of silver bullion out there. So if you go to trade or you go to use it, anybody that gets it from you is not going to question its authenticity where they might with a silver bullion round or something else. So here's a American Silver Eagle 2020. Just a beautiful coin. Let me make that look a little better. And this is 999 pure silver, right? Very, very nice. Been having a hard time getting them this year for a good price. Glad I bought some earlier in the year. So when you have your coin like this, you have to flip it like this. Don't want to handle it too much with my fingers, even though it's okay. And bullion. So what's the difference between this and this? Well, as we mentioned earlier, if you wanted an ounce of silver to equal this, you just take two half dollars, you pull out four dimes, Two half dollars, four dimes, and you got yourself the same value. Now, somebody may argue that the Silver Eagle is worth more or, you know, better to have. So, dollar forty here. And some may be right because right now in the Silver Eagle is going for almost 40 bucks, 38 bucks, and you're not paying that for a dollar forty worth of junk silver. But it is still an ounce of silver. And to me, that's one of the pros of buying junk silver, not a con, is you can get an ounce of silver, an ounce of junk silver, for quite a bit less than you can get an American Silver Eagle. Now, is it bad to buy these? Absolutely not. These should be in your stack as well. This is a whole different thing here. This is a whole different collectible coin that you can get, and it's pure bullion. So we'll talk in another video about the advantages and disadvantages over one or the other. But you can see here that this is the same thing as this. That's pretty cool, huh? It's good to know when you're buying what you're buying. So yeah, I wanted to compare it to the American Eagle so you could see that, you know, what it takes to get the same amount of silver. All right, well, that concludes our lesson for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. I'm always willing to help. You can also send me an email. My email can be found in my video description. And I appreciate you watching. And always remember, let's keep talking boyan.